Okay. Can, uh, would you mind typing in an S if you can see the first slide of the PowerPoint? It should say Extreme Red Snapback Option Strategies. All right. We're um, doing a sound check and a visual check all in one here. So let's go ahead and dive right in then. We're already past the uh, start. Now, for those of you who don't know who I am, my background pretty much is in the hedge fund space for the past 20 years. And specifically, I was responsible for developing quantitative financial models and also developing various indicators that had predictive value with them. And uh, probably most noted for the development of value charts technology, value charts indicators, I currently serve as president of MicroQuant. And our goal is to bring you the high-quality education and also some very powerful market analysis tools as well. Now, this is standard, but I always like to go over the risk disclaimers. Trading or investing carries a high level of risk. It is not suitable for all people. Before deciding to trade or invest, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience, and ability to tolerate risk. Bottom line, if you cannot afford to lose the money, I would not advise you trade it because you're exposing it to not only the potential for profit, but also the risk of loss. Now, this is not going to, excuse me, really affect what we're doing today, but CFTC Rule 4.41 simply states that past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results, and hypothetical results, performance results, do have certain limitations. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the weakness to the Black-Scholes model. Now, there's other models out there uh, re more recently, but what's interesting here is if you break down this model, still very widely known and very widely used to determine the accurate uh, or a reference, uh, if you will, value for option premiums, we can break this down to evaluate what the inputs are. And I'm, there's a point here that uh, I think gives us a tremendous opportunity to exploit a, a major flaw, in my opinion, in the Black-Scholes model. And certainly not uh, trying to be critical <coughs> excuse me, of this work. It's been great. But uh, you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. So first of all, C stands for the theoretical call premium. S, current stock price. We have T, that's time until option expiration. K, option strike price. R is the risk-free interest rate. And then N, we have some calculations here. Cumulative standard normal distribution. E, exponential term, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So standard deviation of stock returns and the natural uh, uh, logarithm. Okay, uh, Brian, if you can't see the visual, it's probably your screen because everybody else has typed up uh, that they can see it. So you may want to log out and log back in to see if that helps. Sometimes go to webinar or play funny games with that. So um, hopefully everybody can see the formula. If you can just type in F, if you can see black Scholes formula, that'd be great. But uh, I think everybody else can see that. Okay, good. Okay, so now what's interesting here when you look at the Black-Scholes formula is that let's look at two different scenarios. We all know that price discovery sends the price of the underlying up and down over time in a cyclical fashion as price discovery searches for fair value in the market. Now, let's take two different examples here. So the first example, and put example number one, we have a market rallying very hard, being bid up, and it's now caught at an overvalued state. Okay. Example number two, we're going to have just the opposite take place. We're going to have a price to start to really fall off sharply. The market's really selling off, and the prices are now at an undervalued state. Now, what's interesting to me is that if you look at the formula for Black-Scholes, you notice that there's no accounting for value. And we all know how critical value is when we're making a purchase with major assets outside of the marketplace. Obviously, if we came across a piece of real estate and it's significantly undervalued, then it's to our benefit oftentimes to consider purchasing it. Like, for example, we were in the Cayman Islands and there was a lady who had passed away and her condo, or a realtor we knew down there told us her condo was hitting the market, had not even been announced yet, and it was literally priced about $100,000 over or under, excuse me, the average uh, prices. So, yeah, uh, I'll talk about that here in a second to Ronnie. But, so the, the uh, 
you know, we saw an opportunity there. Even if we didn't stay longer term or if we didn't uh, want to keep the condo long term, we, I just went ahead and said, let's buy it. You know, let's pull a trigger on this. And I felt like because it was so far undervalued from what I could tell that, uh, that there really was not any risk. And I was right about that. So we went ahead and put in a bid on that before the real estate office even opened up. As soon as they opened up, they literally had a flock of people coming to buy it. So these undervalued or significantly undervalued assets do not last long. And, and as we'd expect, most of the time we see a reversion and prices start to, to snap back, if you will, to the upside. Now, same thing on overvalued prices. We expect to see prices snap back to the downside. doesn't always have to happen that way. There can be what's called value reversions as well, where overvalued prices just continue to head higher or undervalued prices continue to head lower. So the two, really the two possibilities we're looking at are what we call a value reversion, reverting extreme value cases back to fair value, and that's what we're going to be talking about and trying to exploit today. The other case is the value migration for a particular time frame. And believe it or not, there's actually different types of technical setups you can use to help identify which of those two is actually happening. So uh, value migration is one situation, obviously, where you may have a strong trending market in a particular direction for a defined time frame. Value, mi value reversion, excuse me, is, is that snapback effect pushing prices down to fair value from overvalued or back up to fair value from undervalued. So it's just restoring that order in the markets. It's buyers and sellers jumping in at an opportunity to uh, take advantage of what they perceive to be uh, attractive price levels, either as a buyer or a seller. So again, the Black-Scholes model does not take into consideration value, and that's what we hope to exploit today. The Black-Scholes model makes no distinction between different valuations. Now, this is something that is really good for us. Now, uh, Rodney brings up the, the uh, comment, this does not take into account fat tails. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that's true enough. And what we find is that the, uh, if you look at the dis distribution of the value charts indicator, it does have fatter tails than what we call the standard normal distribution. But in statistics, there's really not a problem with that. So it's still very statistically acceptable. Um, but just a phenomenon we do see in the markets. And that, again, leads to the idea that sometimes undervalued, like in a flash crash situation, can become much more undervalued. Or if you have a short squeeze in the commodity market, overvalued can become much more overvalued. So important to remember those uh, situations. Black-Scholes model treats fair value the same as significantly overvalued or significantly undervalued, which is great for us because we can take advantage of that. This creates a significant opportunity for us as traders. Value relates to the psychology of how active market participants view prices. So value is all about psychology. It's about not what people outside of the markets think about the, the particular underlying, but it's what active traders or active participants view as fair value, overvalued, or undervalued, and you have that going on across all time frames. So that is a, there's a huge psychology element to that, and that, as with other psychology measures or as psychology aspects of the markets, like uh, consumer confidence, value can be measured. So the good news, again, is value can be measured. Traders often take profits at extreme value levels because they feel that prices have gone too far. Now, this is what oftentimes pushes, this is one of the factors at least, that pushes prices back into that value reversion, pushing it back into fair value from overvalued or undervalued, along with new traders jumping in, perceiving that they have an opportunity. Now, profit taking from extreme value levels causes a snapback effect. This is when you have value reversion. If we don't have value reversion, obviously, that snapback effect does not happen. What's interesting is, in most cases, I should say, that I, I observe, if you don't get that snapback, oftentimes there's a pause on the market. And there's clues that the snapback is not going to happen, and there's clues that a value migration is happening instead of the snapback. So it, there is an art and a science to detecting this situation, and there's certainly a great possibility when that does actually happen. We can use this to our advantage on any time frame. 
So the great thing about this is, is that we can actually do single time frame analysis or we can evaluate the valuation of a market across multiple time frames. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with value charts, value charts are the first ever or first model out there for the broad markets that is designed to quantify the valuation of each time market and time frame combination. So we have we now have a tool that we can use to do that. Okay. Extreme overvalued or extreme undervalued prices can often represent extreme points of price bars. As we look, we'll, I'll show you some examples of that here in a second. Now, this is going to cause us to approach, depending on the time frame, trading a little bit differently. We have some different opportunities and options out there that we can consider. We can use this to our advantage when trading options, and that's really what it's all about here. Uh, let's, let's take a question or two. Um, your strategy, yeah, the strategy will work in any market in the world. It can work in uh, markets in India. It can work on markets, obviously, Europe and Asia. Because what we find is that all markets that have to do with humans, obviously, with, uh, with supply and demand, they tend to, to mimic each other in terms of the distribution. So the value charts actually are, are highly effective, not only on U.S. markets, but all markets around the world from our research. Uh, do you monitor volume per strike or look at the skew, uh, and is this part of your technique? Al, this can be only used to, to improve it. So everything we're looking at right now <clears throat> excuse me, only relates to value, but you can actually take that information, that's a great question, and use that to improve the strategy. So yes, I would definitely consider things like that, and I think that can, again, be used to improve upon the quality of the signal. Um, because I'm very new in the option market, please explain to me. No problem. We're going to go into this in detail, so just bear with me here, and I'll show you some examples. How can we tell an overvalued indication whether the trend will continue? Chris, that's oftentimes done by looking at not only value, but looking at price charts and looking at momentum as well and, and other uh, types of patterns. So there's things we can do to improve upon that. Um, and that's we don't have time today to go over a lot of those different things, but at valuecharts.com, we combine the power of price charts and value charts and momentum together to create a, a three-part approach to identifying turning points in the market that can be highly effective. Um, how does okay? How does it affect the HFT? Can we bet on them? Um, you know, I think it, it, in today's day and age, it actually probably creates more opportunities for us because of, of high-frequency traders. So I assume that's what you're asking, Howard. But uh, they tend to exaggerate, in fact, the extremes with overvalued and undervalued situations, and that creates more opportunities for us, strangely enough. So that's something we can actually use to our advantage when we see that uh, uncovered. Now, be careful about post-earnings price action. Implied volatility can be crazy. When you see a gap in prices like we saw recently with Apple Computer, then you want to typically let the market sort itself out a little bit. You, if you see a, a strong signal with your own analysis, obviously you can use that. But there's been a value migration, a huge value shift when you see a massive gap or a gap of any kind after earnings. And so that's change. You need to wait, let the value or the market psychology stabilize, and then we can start to get quality signals again. So um, let's see. Let's see. Um, yeah, we've got questions. Uh, Hamant, if you can just bear with me here. You'll, this is being recorded. This is all being presented in English. Uh, today's presentation, obviously, is no charge. So um, just uh, bear with me here. And then anything we can do to help, I'll give you our email. At, it's, it's really support at valuecharts.com. Just reach out to us, and we can tell you how we can help you learn the different techniques that we teach. Now, be careful holding long options previous Friday, uh, one week out, and the last Thursday before expiration. And the reason for this is, is that you lose a lot of time value between the, the time the sessions are closed and open again. So let me show you in this chart what I'm talking about. If you're trading, let's say, the, one of these opportunities, and it happens to be uncovered the Friday before the final week of expiration, you'll see that a significant amount of time passes between Friday close and Monday open. Okay, so you don't want to hold, in general, a long option position, a naked call or naked put, 
over the weekend like that because you're going to get killed on time value as a general rule. So just be aware of that. The other situation is if you find yourself Thursday evening before the Friday expiration day as a percentage of the time that's left, that's very significant as well. So just as a general rule, uh, stay away from or uh, I would say that you're, you want to consider options that are not using the uh, uh, not going to get beat up on the time value. Okay, uh, can we use these techniques? Or excuse me, can you, we use these chart setup techniques for both day trading and swing trading? Absolutely, absolutely. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Now, um, there's with the, with the price models that we have out there on the market for evaluating the premium for options. There's tremendous opportunities for us to profit now. Okay, because a lot of these models are still not relying upon the value factor because Frankly, the definition of market valuation is a relatively new thing to the markets, and most people are not aware of it as of yet. So I believe that there's a better option premium model that can be created factoring in valuation, but as of now, it doesn't exist. Again, we want to use that to our advantage. Extreme value snapback options trading opportunities do not last long. You must be prepared. Now, Another example in any market, really, if you have a great deal, they don't last long. Okay, I mean, we all see the uh, crazy videos of the, the Friday after Thanksgiving where people uh, rush into stores to take advantage of specials. A friend of mine found a piece of real estate down in Florida that an elderly gentleman had mispriced. He didn't understand how far the market had gone up, and he saw it in the newspaper. And my friend actually drove over early Saturday morning and woke this gentleman up fairly early and said, look, I'll buy your house for what you're asking for. As he was cutting him a check for a deposit, somebody else drove up and offered him 50000 more. But the elderly gentleman honored his word to my friend and sold it to him. But the, the point is, is that even in the market, uh, great deals do not last long. And, and the type of overvalued or undervalued situation we're looking at is fairly extreme. So you need to be fairly ready to, to react when these do these opportunities do present themselves. Uh, let's see here. Got a few questions. Um, let's see. Uh, wouldn't it then be wise to capitalize on the third week? Yes. Uh, depending what you're trading out, if you're, I would trade a couple weeks out. If you're looking at longer term trades, I'll go over that here in a second. You could use wide to wider strikes as well. Uh, can you automate these setups? Have you tried to automate these setups? We, I have, in, in a certain ex, uh, extent, I haven't done it with options, but we've done it with futures, and, and uh, you can do it with stocks as well. So you can automate these setups. Now, uh, let me go ahead and, and go over what this screen is right here. This is a screen we developed for Bloomberg called the Master Value Charts Window, and it's designed to communicate a lot of information relating to market valuation. So there's three tools that I'm going to point out to you here if you're not familiar with this. First one is value bars, and this is up in the left-hand corner right here. This is just an overlay that's designed to color the, the normal open, high, low, close price bars one of three different colors. And these colors match up down here with your value charts price window that's directly below. So the value charts price window is essentially designed to classify price in one of five primary valuation zones. And the middle one is called fair value. That's where we get about 68% of historical trading activity for the market and time frame combination. The next one up is called moderately overvalued. That's the upper yellow. And then you have significantly overvalued at the top here. My red's kind of blending in. And then you have moderately undervalued. That's the lower yellow below the green. And then you have significantly undervalued here at the very bottom. So five primary valuation zones, three colors you have to remember. And these actually match up with this tool over here on the right called the Price Action Profile. Now, let me tell you how this helps us here. Uh, this, these tools, by the way, we've actually had them validated by PhDs from top universities. So these are not just, we're not just creating these and, and hoping that they work. Um, like any tool, you know, they, they're, we're going to use them to try to indicate or predict uh, future market movement, but they, the value charts tool has been validated by Three PhDs are two from University of Michigan University, or UCLA and the third from University of Pennsylvania Wharton reviewed their work and said that value charts are indeed effective in quantifying or defining market valuation. So look over here on the right-hand side. The price section profile is really a frequency histogram of the trading activity down here in the value charts price window for that market and time frame combination. So what does that mean? You'll notice that the red corresponds. I'm going to clean up my chart here and erase my drawings, but... 
the red on the value charts price window corresponds to the red bars on the price section profile. They're just not lined up because we also want to see the traditional price chart. The yellow corresponds to the yellow, the green corresponds to the green, etc. So if we took all of these bars here in the value charts price window and stack them up, even the ones that are not shown on the screen, we would get a histogram, okay, over here to the left hand side. In fact, I'll draw that a little bit off the off the window here. We get that histogram that looks exactly like what we see in the price section profile. Now, why do we care about that? The reason why we care about that is this now allows us to calculate the degree that a market is overvalued or undervalued. Now, what we care about today is not just any degree, but we care about it when it goes up in the upper red zone right here or the lower red zone. And on this particular example, we can see that for Apple Computer on a monthly basis, it only trades in the upper red zone less than 1.7% of the time. And it trades in the lower red zone that's significantly undervalued less than 2% of the time. So if we go to our chart here, it's hard for you to see, but we have a red tip right there, uh, right here, and that was very close to the top. You'll notice that it wasn't the final top, but you'll see that the next, the next monthly price bar actually sold off $50 per share before it bounded back up. So it did cause the market to reverse a little bit. We can see we have upper red tips up here as well, and then we have two lower significantly undervalued red tips there as well. So these can be very meaningful situations. You also have one down here, a significantly undervalued portion. So we're looking out for those as option traders, and we're looking to try to take advantage of those, counting on a fair value snapback. And somebody just mentioned, what about the time that's considered to, to take you know, uh, a trade to develop? So you don't want to, on a monthly basis or a weekly basis, we don't want to buy options that expire in one week or two weeks or three weeks. In general, we want to give ourselves some time with that. So going six weeks out and beyond is probably pretty smart so we don't get beat up too badly by time decay. All right? But in general, generally speaking, we see how these tools can be very powerful at times to identifying the extreme bottoms or tops before a market snaps back, if you will. And that's what we're looking at here. Okay, I put some what we call value flags here to call attention to these extreme areas. Again, this first situation was not the eventual top, but we did see Apple Computer correct $50 a share instantly. I mean, at the beginning of next month, it sold off by $50 a share. So if you would have sold this or bought a put option or tr taken advantage of that, then you should have been fairly profitable in that trade. Again, we have some nice, uh, significantly undervalued indications here at the bottom. We have some nice, significantly overvalued here at the top. And then again here at the bottom. Now, these don't always work. They don't always sig signify the eventual top and bottom. We'll see in this particular case, the final top on Apple was right up here. We had a what we call a yellow hat doji formation on the monthly. But that was not classified as significantly overvalued, but was classified as moderately overvalued. Now, a couple questions here. Is the price action profile just the normal bell curve? Uh, John, it, it is a, it's very close to a standard normal distribution, but it has fatter tails, which does not pose a problem to us from a statistics standpoint. So it still has the predictive elements or capabilities that we rely upon using the distribution. So it is, a, it has a little bit fatter tails than normal, but it's very close. Uh, what are you using, excuse me, why are you not using an updated chart? Oh, uh, Rudy, I just use this for my example. Uh, we can. We're going to look at some updated charts today, too, so we'll look at both. Uh, isn't your system just a reiteration of what the implied volatility is already telling us? No. Uh, for value charts, is different. Implied volatility does not tell us where the extremes are. You can actually use it, though, as a complement to the strategy. Okay, so implied volatility can be used as a timing element. I, I you know, definitely encourage you to add you know, like different types of analysis to this, including applied volatility, including a volume, including pattern recognition. There's a lot of things you can add. Uh, what is the data feed? This case, Ron, this is Bloomberg. Okay, so price section profile, the same as the market profile indicator. No, it's actually very different. Market profile is actually looking at something different. Uh, price section profile is measuring the distribution of value charts price levels here at the bottom across, above, um, within above and below what we call the dynamic volatility units, which are the units that the value charts uses. A pro market profile is a little bit different than that. It's measuring a different kind of 
distribution of price across the different ticks, the tick values in a market. Um, okay, let's see here. But value charts is this available in India? Yeah, this this is. Uh, let us know. Just uh, go to valuecharts.com, and and we have users from all over the world using it. Well, on various different platforms. Okay, all right. So let's move on here. Now, this is a case where, and sometimes you find that the value charts, red tips or red tails work extremely well for markets. It's interesting with Apple Computer on a weekly basis that uh, it was catching the highs and lows fairly effectively. Now, this is not optimized at all. This is not me going in and trying to curve fit anything. This is just what it was. So I did a really nice job of calling out on a weekly basis some of these extreme lows and extreme highs in the markets. So this can be used obviously to try to take advantage of this by profiting from various different option strategies here and that's what we're going to try to do here now again it doesn't mean that the market necessarily has to revert it doesn't mean that at all the market can continue and it, it can experience a value migration a recent example of that is here we had the stock or, of our price of Apple computer gap up with earnings and we've had the value reset essentially in the market. So when that happens, I would tend to be a little less leery, or more leery of that. So I would tend to, to not necessarily put a lot of credence on that when you have a big gap in that direction, because quite oftentimes it's, it's a realignment in the valuation of a market. If you have other indicators now where you drill down on the weekly or daily or 60 minute that are telling you that you have a strong sell signal, then that can add further credence to a potential significantly overvalued or undervalued situation. Now let's take a look at this. This is just zooming in on the actual value bars indicator or the price chart using open, high, low, close. And you can see on a weekly basis that this was fairly effective. Now again, the point here is not for me to go back and say, look how this nailed all the highs and lows, because that usually doesn't happen, just to be honest with you. But it can be very powerful. It can, I, I believe it can be very powerful. And and certainly a very powerful trading tool to complement what you're already using, using the value charts concept. So let me show you a strategy here that I consider when we're looking at a longer term situation. So this is, you know, three, three plus weeks out. I would even go farther out possibly than that, depending on whether you're looking at, uh, you know, monthly bars or, or weekly bars. But what we can look at here are three or four different approaches here. One is called a call back spread. One is called a putback spread, and then we have a long straddle, if you want to be more neutral in your approach, or a long strangle. So we're looking at things a little bit differently than a lot of traders. I know that with a lot of traders, you have the iron condor, which is selling the, uh, the strangle, which is popular. And that's typically, a lot of traders use that in the absence of any compelling information about the direction of the market. Now, we're approaching things differently. We have compelling information, potentially, about the direction of the market. So... We're using strategies that, can, that are designed, if you will, to try to take advantage of that. Now, the first one we'll look at is the long straddle. For those of you who are, are seasoned option traders, bear with me here for the newer folks. But this is just involving buying a call option and buying a put option at the same strike price. So if we have this red extreme tail here in the markets, we have one of two situations that typically unfolds. Either we have a snapback and that's taken the prices down in this case. Let's say we, we have an overvalued, a significantly overvalued situation. Market prices have zipped up. This could cause prices to move down. If that happens, guess what? We're profitable. Let's say we're dead wrong, and then you have prices continue higher here, and we have a value migration. Well, good news is with the long straddle, we can all actually profit from that as well. So the risk here is if the market doesn't go anywhere. If it stalls out and stays right where it's at, that's your risk of maximum loss exposure. If it moves in your direction either way, and typically we expect the, the snapback, then this can be a profitable strategy. But again, if you're doing this on a longer term time frame, I would recommend going further than three weeks out so you're not getting killed on the time value uh, decay. So here's another one. This is a long strangle, and this is buying one call option or, and buying a put option simultaneously and these are at different strike prices so if current price is right here in the middle you can buy one buy a put option below and buy a call option above this lessens your maximum risk scenario unlike the straddle but it takes longer to achieve profitability too a little bit of a give, give take scenario but 
If you prefer to have a neutral approach to the longer term extreme value situations, this can be very effective as can the long straddle as well. Now, I prefer to use a directional approach oftentimes, and one example of this could be the callback spread. You can compare this to the, the long straddle and see if this is a, a better approach, but the callback spread is if it's significantly undervalued here. So if prices have really sold off, I'm expecting them to snap back up in the up direction, then I can sell one call option at a higher strike price, okay, and, I'm sorry, at the lower strike price, I'm selling one right here, so sell one here, and then I'm buying two call options at a higher strike price. So I'm buying two at a higher strike price and hopefully achieving a profit profile just like this. So if the trade goes against me hard and I'm wrong and it goes, the market continues to sell off, guess what? I'm still profitable here potentially on the downside. If it ends up going in my direction and the market zips back up into fair value, then I should be profitable. I will be profitable on the upside. So that's a nice situation too. Again, your maximum risk exposure is if the market does nothing and your risk of loss is essentially the difference between your sales price for the um, uh, the in the money or at the money call option and your purchase price for the out of the money call options. So the, the reverse situation here is what we call the putback spread and it's doing the exact opposite here. We are selling one higher strike price put, buying two lower strike price puts. So we're, we're buying two here, and then we're selling one up here. And this creates potentially a profit profile just like this. So if we're dead wrong again, we still can achieve profitability, which is good. And if we're right, the market really starts to sell off again. This is a scenario where the market zips up. We have significantly overvalued situation, and it snaps back, let's say, in a fair value over time. Then we're looking at a nice situation on the downside where profit potential is, is not capped out. Now, theoretically, it's capped out at zero if the underlying goes to zero. But from a practical standpoint, it, this allows us to generate some nice profits there. Okay. Um, what's the blob at the bottom? Just giving credit to the uh, where I got these graphics from. Okay. Let's see. Show the, the call back spread slide again. Okay. Let me uh, go back to that. So let's look at that for a second. Okay, it's uh, what happened with the GMCR Friday? Okay, short covering, legitimate move. Deborah, I am not sure uh, that I'm not uh, I'm not uh, sure how to comment with that. I'd have to pull up a chart. Um, let's see. You may want wish to point out that you have an extensive library of short videos on your website that explains your product so they can hold off the questions. Yeah, I think, Raymond, thank you very much. If you go to valuecharts.com, Raymond, I appreciate you saying that. I should have thought of that. Uh, go to valuecharts.com. It's V-A-L-U-E-C-H-A-R-T-S.com. We do have a library with, with a lot of videos uh, outlining and describing these tools in more detail. So, uh, so I won't take up uh, too much uh, of our time today. So one question here is if you look at the Apple call option, I'm sorry, this is actually a put option on the 30th of April. If we just look at the price of the put option, there's nothing here per se that tells us that we have a, a buying opportunity. Let's look at some examples of how you can apply this strategy. And I'm going to show you some confluence examples here for, uh, for trading this. So going back to that situation now, let's go back to Apple here. There's nothing here on this chart that I see. We don't have any tools, obviously, here. So we don't have anything per se jumping out at us saying that this is a good buying opportunity. Now, if we go to the actual price of Apple, what I've done is I've taken three value charts indicators. Again, value charts are designed to communicate the objective valuation for any market and time frame combination. We're using a 15-minute chart here, and I've actually applied three of the same indicator here with different settings to a 15-minute chart of Apple Computer. This is the underlying right now. So the first chart you'll notice has a five bar look back. The second bar or chart has a or indicator has a 14 bar look back. And the third at the very bottom has a 21 bar look back. And what that accomplishes for me is it gives me a different focus for valuation. Five bar is very, rea very reactive, very short term for Apple on the 15 minute chart. The 14 bar is longer term 
and the 21 bar is the longest term. Now, the way you change your value focus, if you will, for any market is by either lengthening the look back or analysis period in the value charts indicator or by lengthening your bar interval. So good, looking at maybe a 30 minute or a 60 minute or beyond chart for Apple computer. In this case, we're using 15 minutes, but just lengthening the look back or analysis period for the value charts. And that gives us three different looks here. Now at the very top, circled up here, you'll notice that there's dots above the market. There's three of them. These are what's called value flags. And so if we have three dots above the prices up here, that tells us that we had three occurrences of significantly overvalued prices. And you can see that all three of these charts below registered red tails on the top. Okay, in fact, you know what? Let me go ahead and um, change the color so it'll contrast more. Let's go with the kind of a lighter blue. So all three of these situations right down here are significantly overvalued prices on a 15 minute chart. Now what we want to do is we want to buy a put option strike price that's either in the money or slightly out of the money or at the money. So that's what we're looking at. You don't want to look at doing this too much with strike prices that are deep in the money or deep out of the money in my experience. Now you can try doing experimenting with whatever you want, but what I'd advise is something that a put option strike price that is slightly in the money, at the money, or slightly out of the money because we're not looking to hold this very long at all. So let's go back and see how this snapback, potential snapback that we can identify in real time using the value charts indicators here, uh, let's see how that actually affected the options price. Now before I do that, let me show you something here that's meaningful. With Apple Computer on a 15 minute basis, we go back over to Bloomberg, we can see that prices only trade in the red, upper red area that's significantly overvalued less than 1.5% of the time. Okay, so that's pretty, that's nosebleed area up there. All right, now we have it not only for one look back period, but for three. So it's increasing our probabilities a little bit. Now, if we would have taken advantage of that, we could have purchased the call option here for the six, I'm sorry, put option, excuse me. We're betting for prices to go down on the underline. This is a chart of the 600 put option for Apple computer. And you can see that we, we should have been able to buy this for probably right around the, call it the 550 range here. Right? Now, depending on how long we hold this, this is not the last Thursday before expiration day, we could have dumped this by the close for a pretty close to 100% return, or if we were compelled to hold it overnight, we could have eventually cashed in for slightly more than that. During expiration week, if you're buying long calls or long puts, I, again, don't recommend you do that. Don't hold it overnight the last day and the Thursday evening. You can Tuesday or Wednesday or Monday evening if you want to. Again, you're going to be bled a little bit with the time value. But in general, what I like to do is I like to try to, to take my profits and run by the end of the trading day. In this particular example, we're able to do that. Now, what I do, what I like to do myself or think in terms of for risk management, if I pay 550 for this, this uh, call or put option here, I'm generally speaking thinking of risking about 50%. So I'm thinking about putting my stop pretty darn close to call it two two and a half-ish, if you will, for, for this. And we'll see that it never even came close to that. Uh, let's get some uh, questions. Okay, how far in the money, how far do you go in the money uh, is a function of ATR? Uh, if a, yes, and that's, Rodney, that's exactly right. So um, that, if you have a stock that's really, uh, has a very low volatility, uh, Rodney brings up an excellent point, and that is you don't want to go too far in the money or too far out of the money in that particular case. All right. In fact, you, you really need to be careful not to go too far out of the money, if at all, if you have a very low ATR. If you have a higher ATR or higher volatility in the market, then you can take a little bit more of a liberty there with trading more out of the money or in the money options. Um, okay, A put option would lose money as prices increase. Exactly right, Drew. Now, but this is, the, this is actually the option chart here. It's not the underlying. Let's go back to the underlying. This is the underlying. So we see in the underlying with the actual stock price that this actually goes down. So as Apple sells off here, right, our put option we're buying is going to benefit as prices sell off in the underlying. And you can see it does. It goes from essentially the $5 per share option premium to all the way up to a high of $13 here in about 24 hours or so. So not a bad deal, not bad potential, and that's what we want to try to take advantage of that. Okay, so uh, yeah, that was an option charge. I probably should have made that more clear. 
uh, is the stock going up? Uh, stock is going down, puts going up. Okay, so, so it's, it's got the inverse relationship there. Uh, for a long-term play, like a swing trade of two to ten days, how far out of the options should you be uh, uh, in the money or at the money? You have more flexibility there, Mike. If you have, if you're betting on a much more substantial move, what I would do is look at an indicator like MQ Market Strength. That's one we have at Value Charts. But you want to make sure that as you project the next cycle or next move in the swing or move in the market, that it's well within the range of what normally happens or could happen for the market. So if you don't want to buy a strike that's way outside of, of where the market could move and that would require a almost a historic move to the upside or downside, you want to, to select a price, in my opinion, that would be well within the realm of possibility for a normal move in your direction, okay, and, and not be too aggressive because if you, yeah, and, and you could benefit from that. Uh, even if it is a little farther outside for a swing trade or a trend trade, you can you should still be able to benefit from that increase in, in volatility. Now, the other thing you want to look at for longer term trades is you need to pay attention to implied volatility or the VIX because that can, uh, in general, I think you can still find some nice profit opportunities, but that might affect the way you approach your trade. So if you, if you have a directional move that you expect and you expect volatility to actually uh, decrease, then that's going to affect what kind of option strategy that you want to, you want to uh, apply. So, Okay, so what time frame on a chart uh, daily or even six minute or sixty minute? What time frame? On, okay, Mike, if you don't mind elaborating on that. Okay, what is the delta? Uh, delta is I'm I'm not really looking at delta so much uh, when when I look at these as I'm looking at um, the location of the strike price, and that's going to define the delta for us as well. So don't think in terms of delta so much for this and get get too hung up on that, even though that directly correlates to what we're talking about. Focus more on having your your strike really almost at the money or slightly out of the money as much as possible. Okay, um, let's see here. Do you look at the VIX spikes? Yeah, I do. Actually, you can look at the VIX spikes as well and even trade VIX options. Let's go on. to Let me show you a few more examples here, and I'll take some more questions. Um, look at this right here. So we have a situation in Google right now on a for a put option is has sold off, gotten hammered early in the session. This is on May first, I think and then rebounded right away. So let's see what happened in the underlying. Now we can see right here on May 1st that we have three dots above the prices because as we go down and look at our value charts indicators, we have three red tails, okay? And this, this confluence opens up, plots of three red dots up here. We need to be ready when prices are up here near the tip to jump all over buying the put options here. And again, we're really close to the 532 price level. We have good volatility on the 15-minute basis, and so what? What are we probably looking at? Something maybe around the 530 or 532.50 put option strike price. So going over here, looking at the 530s, we can see that we would have been able to buy the put option for around three, or maybe even less than that, maybe 2.75. And within an hour, we have this going above six. So that snapback right here worked out really well. All three time frames agree have a chance to make 100% in about an hour, which is not a bad thing. Now, second opportunity here in Google. So let's take a look at what's happening on May 2nd, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and look at the underlying again. Now, this is a situation where if you're approaching expiration Friday, okay, so it's, if it's Friday morning, the option contract actually expires that day, then what I like to do is I like to not only, I don't have to require necessarily three dots up here. If I have two occurrences, of significantly overvalued or significantly undervalued, those can often be great trading opportunities as well. And if we go back and look, we can see that we had a 400% increase on expiration day, literally in about two hours of the option premium going from a low of around one to a high of over four. So I mean, right away, literally within an hour, you're up 200%, potentially, actually not 400%, I should say 300% there. But um, this is going from one to over four in about two, two and a half hours here. So not a bad deal there. Again, you've got to be very quick on the draw. This is a five minute chart here of Google, the Google put option, the uh, 530 puts, and this is requiring you to, to really pull the trigger quickly if you can. Now let me show you an example of where it didn't work so well. This is the 310 put for Amazon, and we'll see that we had a number of three dot occurrences right here. So we're looking to buy the put option, find something that's fairly close to at the money or slightly out of the money. And we go back over. 
we would have bought the, I call it the 310 put option strike price here. Expiration day is still, it's not, I mean, it's one day away. So it's a Thursday before expiration. We buy this and hold it, and we'll see that the price of the underlying just really never goes our direction. So if you see this happening, it starts drifting your direction. If you bought it for around four or even four and a half, call it, and it doesn't hit your stop down here around two or two and a half, then by the end of the day, if it doesn't go your direction fairly quickly, then I would recommend you bail. All right, even after a, even after a few hours, if it's not doing if the snapback, then then I'd recommend you just jump ship, live to trade another day. All right, it doesn't always work out. Um, Let's see, Peter, do you have an alarm for the three dots as an alternative to watching the charts? Yeah, you, you can set things up like that, certainly, in, uh, and set up uh, uh, you know, a, a, a way for an alarm to go off, certainly a value alert when, when those conditions are met. Yep, you can do that. Uh, that takes a little bit of a custom design, and if you contact us, we can try to, to direct you or point you in the right direction with that. Uh, now, th here's what's interesting here. With Amazon, remember, the first trade that we looked at buying the put option, it didn't work out. We lost, call it around, whatever, 30-plus percent of our of our premium there. If we held it through the end of the day, maybe a little bit more. But let's look at the second opportunity here to buy the put option on the open on Friday morning again. So if you look, we had three dots above the open here. And again, this is the last day of trading, expiration Friday. Beautiful opportunity here to capitalize on that. So we have significantly overvalued for the five bars back, 14 bars back, and 21 bars back. Very short-lived opportunity that we need to jump on this literally in the first five to 10 minutes of trading here. We see the price of the option go from one all the way up over five, 400% increase in about an hour's time. So that's not a bad deal. Works out really well is there. Now, let me just touch on this real quick. I've been asked by a lot of you over time. This is the, I've presented this in the last, uh, like twice over the last couple of weeks. I've had a lot of people come and say, Mark, we want more information. And so I have actually put together a class that I'm teaching this next week. It will be recorded. If you're interested, I've knocked the price down to make it very affordable for everybody. But it's go to www.valuecharts.com forward slash snap. I've knocked the price down all the way to $49 for the class. It is a two-hour class. Do not, yeah, so go to the website, valuecharts.com forward slash snap. What I'll be covering in this class is going to be the following. If you're interested in learning more strategies relating to the snapback, again, how the options market underprices risk, or review of Black Scholes where it fails, three to six week extreme snapback option strategies. A lot of you have asked about that. What should we do in particular? We're going to take a look at some of those strategies and exactly and some options on how to trade that. Expiration day, red snapback open, not only across the confluence of several different indicators applied to one time frame, but we're also going to look at how to do that across multi-time frame strategies. So we're looking at maybe a five, uh, maybe a 30-minute, 15-minute, 60-minute daily, etc. So a lot of cool things we can do with that. We're going to also look at extreme red and yellow parameter confluence strategies, so it's significantly overvalued and moderately overvalued. Expiration week dynamics, very important that we understand that. And then trading examples will utilize value charts trading tools in the course. So it's just important to understand that uh, that we will use value charts. If you don't have it, I'm going to I'm going to give you an opportunity to get a discount on that at the end if you if you choose to buy it. All right. But if you walk away from the class, you'll learn a very powerful way of trading options. And if, if nothing else, I believe it'll be very beneficial and something you can apply even using other types of tools that might not be a perfect fit, but might be interchangeable with value charts. Okay, good stuff. Signing up for it now. Thanks, Al. Appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, I'm working to hone my Greeks and Black Shoals model mispricing. Beautiful. I mean, that's exactly what you should be doing. So um, let's see. Again, another question, but I don't have any chart. I'm doing this in the Indian markets only if it really works. I'm happy if you teach me slowly. Um, I will record this. If so, if you're if you're from India and you if you're challenged with English, I'm going to record this so you can watch this as many times as you want. So I would recommend that you check it out. In terms of accessing tools, we build tools out for another tr number of trading platforms. So go to valuecharts.com and we'll show you the trading platforms. So just contact us at support at valuecharts.com and we can tell you the platforms we build the tools for. And you can take those platforms and chart Indian markets over there. 
Uh, okay, for this kind of directional trade, do we buy the same week or the following week's options in general? It depends on what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to take advantage of, um, of, a, of a very short-term opportunity, then you want to go and buy a, you know, you can buy that week's option. So if you're looking at holding it and closing out the trade before the end of the day, then I would certainly look at, at the weekly option that's expiring that week. And look at the Friday, the actual expiration day Friday. There's some fabulous trading opportunities that pop up over time. In fact, let me just pop up a chart here. I'm going to show you. Again, go to valuecharts.com forward slash snap if you want to take advantage of this course. Love to have you there. We have a bunch of people signed up already. Now let me go ahead and um, switch over to my trade station here. I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, let me just minimize this so you can see still where you can sign up. Now, here's, I'm going to show you some examples of, of what worked and what didn't this past week. We have two nice situations that actually worked out fairly well on Amazon, 15-minute, actually three, and then we have one situation where we had a migration that didn't work out at, well, uh, at all. So, um, first of all, if you go back to your left-hand side, we have a really nice overvalued situation here early on in the week. This occurred on June 1st. So, this is a situation where we're looking to buy puts. Again, probably three, 12 and a half. Right around here, this is a 15-minute chart, and then the puts would have been profitable. It's sold off right here. And then you'll see that the opening of the next day on June 3rd, or next, I'm sorry, this is actually the uh, next week, I guess Monday, uh, this opens way down significantly undervalued. I've got my three dots below here. That's a good opportunity right there within that one 15-minute bar of taking advantage of buying some call options right away. So be on the lookout. Now, that, ex that exact same setup actually happened the next day. So not only on June 3rd, but also on June 4th. The snapback was really nice there and really good profit opportunity for June 4th on the underlying here. And then we see where it actually didn't work out. You can see you have a number of triple dots up here on the prices. That's a clear value migration. When you see that, you just want to, if you, if you bet on that and, and buy the put options here, then you'll probably be stopped out with a loss of 50%. But with these three trades that happened before in the three days previous, the three sessions previous, you have a lot of opportunity to make some nice profits in those. So that's pretty much how that works out. Um, a good example with, um, with Amazon. Let me see if I can field some questions here. Okay, Trevor, value charts. Let's see. Value charts, how your member information platinum, not one-time lesson. Uh, what is the monthly fee? Uh, you can get a, a Platinum trial membership. If you sign up for this class, I believe it offers you like a $7 trial. So uh, you can't beat that. And that's uh, access to all of our live trading rooms. You get our trade alerts and everything else. So if you're interested in learning more about this, we do have an options live trading room. So we have a, a lot of people who rave about it. They just enjoy watching Dave Aquino find real-time option strategies. And he does everything. He does, he does some strategies that involve selling options. He does some that involve buying. So he's very diversified. In this approach, but uh, I mean, for a seven-dollar risk, it's one that's only offered one to, once, one time to each user. After that, and it defaults to our charter membership price of ninety-seven dollars a month, which I believe is still a great deal. You're still saving a lot of money there. Okay, will there be a printable PDF with the class? No, Ron, there won't be, but there will be a recording, so I will record it. Uh, we haven't necessarily. I, I, I've been, gone away from from printing out the PDFs just because I have people that are taking our strategies and trying to to replicate those, the indicators, and we actually have patented the technology and our indicators, so I'm not trying to, I'm trying not to make their lives too easy, but at the same time, I want to make sure that you're given information that you can use to learn, and we found that the recording of the video really accomplishes that. Uh, does the membership include indicators? No, it does not. In indicator bundles are separate, but you can get the value charts indicator for a special price as well, so that, that'll be very inexpensive. You can, you, we, we've broken it out of the bundle where you can buy it for $97 if you want. The bundles normally 997. So, I mean, most most traders are risking more than $97 each trade. To me, it's it's uh, yeah, well worth the worth the uh, option for that. Okay, do you have do you have strategy triggers, William? You can use a lot of different things. You can use uh, candlestick patterns. You can drill down further. This is 15 minute right here, so that's fairly you know that's getting down there in terms of the time. So, I'm not using anything but the state of the valuation for these triggers. But going longer term, there's some great triggers you can use out there. Absolutely. Uh, can you mimic the Bloomberg setup on NinjaTrader or TradeStation? Brian, you can come close, and you don't really need to, per se. The, the, uh, uh, the Bloomberg setup with the price action profile, that's actually built in real time. 
And that's something we're working on with our own trading platform that we're building in-house at, at uh, MicroQuant. And again, for those of you who have been waiting for that, I apologize. We have a time series server issue. I want to make sure we get past to make sure we broadcast reliable data. We're working on that right now. But that will have something that allow you to set up just like Bloomberg. So that's coming along. But for TradeStation and, and Ninja, you can get the, the value bars and the value chart price window below. And that gives you really the most important information that you're looking for. Uh, with the red tails, if you will. So that's what you need to trade. And you have the price section profile in TradeStation that gives you the overall bell curve statistics that you can use. But in general, you're going to know the red extremes are usually less than 2%. If you just know that as a general rule, it's very helpful. Okay, uh, not available on TOS. It is available on TOS. Yep, it is available on TOS. Uh, will a session be available on video? Yes, this will. We recorded today's session. Uh, let's see here. Uh, are the value charts with the 5, 14, and 21 look-back periods that show extreme overbought and, and uh, oversold conditions available for purchase? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Uh, work with M NQ Futures 2 or TC2000T. They don't at this point, but our, our own platform that we're working on right now should be available in the not-too-distant future, and though, that's something you can use as broker-neutral. So uh, that's a possibility. Uh, Ninja Trader is actually broker neutral as well. We haven't designed anything on TC2000. Do you know, T, offhand, if um, they allow third-party marketers to, 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 to uh, build tools out for their platform? It's been a while since I've talked to folks at Warden Brothers, so I'm, not, I'm just not sure. Um, okay, I'm having trouble getting the website to work. Rick, you are? Let me just pull that up here. Uh, if that's the case, I apologize. Just a second here. Okay, you should see this, okay, if you, if you typed in, again, www.valuecharts.com forward slash snap, this is what you should reach. So it just worked for me, I just pulled this up, and this will be the screen that allows you to check in. If you're going to the valuecharts.com website, just type in, so type in valuecharts. Dot com and that's going to pull up the the website and that is functioning right now as well. So you can you can get information on both pages and you should be good to go there. Okay, uh, I just had a problem using Chrome. I gotcha. Okay, just signed up. Al, great. We'll look forward to seeing you there. Uh, what is your office hours? You can contact our office. They're, they're typically open Monday through Friday, uh, call it 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, sometimes they're available on weekends if we have a lot of calls. Bear with us. Leave us your telephone number, and we will get back to you on that. Uh, GMCR, is that a, um, a, a symbol? Hey, uh, forgive me if I'm not picking up on the abbreviation there. Okay. Yes, okay. GMCR. I'll let you look at that while I answer more questions here. Yeah, interesting. Nice. You see a couple of nice selling opportunities here. Uh, one early on that went nowhere fast. I don't think that would have been a big loss there, hopefully. After about an hour or two of trading sideways, this first one should have been a situation where you you might not have you know gotten too had too much of a loss, maybe a little loss in that trade. Nice, this one had a nice snapback. The second one on, on uh, May 30th, on June 1st, uh, that one had really didn't it, it it poked up into significantly overvalued and traded sideways for a while. So this one you probably could have gotten out of close to break even. I think really nice one a two bar, two dot one that was on the 5th of May. I'm sorry, June, and then we had a nice one early on, a sell signal that did have a snapback on the downside, and then we had the value migration later on in the day. Okay, so by the way, let's talk about this really quickly. If your expiration day, like this was right here, um, you want to be careful in a situation like this. Obviously, something happened to this stock uh, where you saw an announcement or something shoot this thing up here, but um, this is a situation where if it's late in the expiration day, the Friday itself, then I'm only looking really to trade with strategies really early in the morning, first thing in the morning is what I'm watching for. So you did have an opportunity to capitalize early on, uh, potentially with a small profit, but um, later on, yeah, the uh, value migration, especially near expiration close, I would not be looking to do much there. Okay, are the dot signals on your chart value a painted bar show me? Yeah, those are show me indicators in TradeStation. Yep. Uh, please review the top pane. Okay, the top pane right here is a, we've got candlesticks here, and we have the value flags, which are show me indicators here on TradeStation. 
And these are just plotting when you have a red, a significantly overvalued, that's the upper red, and those will be the dots above the prices. And they, we have each color corresponding to each look back period for each one of the value charts indicators here below. So we have one dot that's corresponding to the five bar analysis period, that's the white dot. One dot corresponding to the 14 bar analysis period, that's cyan. And one dot corresponding to the 21 bar analysis period, that's magenta. Or actually, I might have, I might have even told it's backwards. Magenta may be the five bar, and uh, I think the white is the uh, 21 bar. But you can see when they're all populated up there that, um, that gives you, you know, the significantly overvalued occurrences. And then the same thing on the downside. When it happens on the downside, it can give you significantly undervalued occurrences as well. So not a decent, yeah, nice situations here. I mean, you had a, this is a close to the top. Yeah, that would, I don't know if that would have stopped us out in the options there. But right here, nice snapback for a couple hours there. Really nice low here that it nailed pretty nicely. And then over here to the right-hand side, I don't think that, that would, trended sideways for a little bit. So probably would have been a small loss in that situation. But also to keep in mind that you want to make sure that the options liquidity and the options market is fairly active. You don't want to, to do this and, and get dinged too badly on slippage. So if you're trading a stock that has optionable stock and it doesn't have options that are very that's thinly traded with the options, be careful. Okay, this is recorded, Paul. Yep. Uh, do you have a, a scanner or a scanner to filter out the three dot situation? I haven't actually created that, Liz, but I believe you can you can create that. Yeah. So uh, I'd have to think about that. I think you can take the value charts and try to do that. That'd be a good tool. That's the reason why we don't we don't do that very often, Liz, is we let we let our our, our traders tell us what they want to do, and sometimes we'll do some custom work for them. Uh, we don't benefit here at Value Charts with that. We do have programmers who work off hours to build out customized things that certain people want. But the, the scanners work so differently in all the different platforms we support that it's a bit of a challenge to try to um, to try to uh, create that. Okay, is a snapback? Let me throw up Apple here real quick. We got a question on that. Okay, um, it gives you a little bit of a picture here, some opportunities. Uh, question here. Okay, does let's see here. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was very informative. Th thanks, Raymond. Appreciate that. How can I contact you privately? Uh, uh, yeah, Rudy, just send, get, contact us at uh, support at valuecharts.com. Send, send us an email there and just say forward it to Mark if you have a question, and I'll do the best I can to answer that for you. Uh, since market trend to alternatives between extremes, have you tried trading based on time in normal value range? No, that's a, that's a good question, Rodney. There's a lot of different possibilities for this. So we're just looking at the extreme red value, but there are you can do value range trading with the between the greens. So that's a very powerful way of approaching this, and I'm going to show you more about that at this actual presentation. So for those of you who actually come here with the uh, extreme red snapback conflicts, I'm going to show you some value range trading strategies. So, uh, Rodney, you kind of read into that, and that's going to be a cool way to approach trading the markets as well. Um, are the dot okay value charts okay are are the dot signals on your chart value charts paint bar show me yes I think I answered that okay is this a snapback course different from the power weekly option strategies yes right this is different I've never taught this before and I'll had a lot of you come to me and say Mark I need more information can you can you offer a workshop on this and we're doing it so this is uh, to address the demand. Um, Okay, this is recorded again. Is this a new indicator with the dots? Uh, no, Henry, that is just the value flags. So depending on what platform you have, it's called also a show me function in TradeStation, but the actual indicator itself is called value flags. Let's see if I can throw that back up there. Okay, just a second here. Okay, so if I pull this up, I'm going to double click on these dots here. You're going to see me pull up a value flag indicator. Right here, this is a show me, and these are the these are the different settings I can use. So basically, I'm typing in a five bar look back analysis period here. I leave the scaling multiplier alone at 0.2. The value level is is eight that I'm looking for, and then I'm looking for true being flag above bar. So if it's if it's over eight, I want the flag to appear above my price bar. If I put negative eight as my value level, apply another value flag to my chart, then I put false for above bar because I want the, the significantly undervalued occurrences to plot flags underneath my price bars. Uh, this tool is available for TOS. Yes, it is, Ron. Great for options trading. 
Uh, does your value chart work on TOS? Yep. And uh, do we have to own? No, you don't have to own our platform. We develop these tools across many platforms. Uh, what platform do you use? I use top pl TOS platform. Yep. Answer the question. TOS is great. We develop tools for TOS. So uh, you can go. And if you come to class, we're gonna. I'll show you how to get the, the value charts indicator at the end of it. You're interested, and we'll give you a discounted uh, price on that. So again, our goal here is is we believe. Here's our philosophy. We believe that if we offer you very low cost education, that's what this is, $47 is as cheap as this ever gets. This is normally around a $297 class that we offer. Uh, so offering it very cheaply, so it really is very low risk on your part. And then at the end of it, we're offering you the ability to also get the value charts indicator for very cheap for $97 if you want it, you know, if you choose to get it. So normally it's we haven't broken that out of the core bundle, which is a $997 bundle. But what we found is that people start using the value charge tools and start seeing the power behind it, and then they come and, and kick the test drive for $7, and then they see how we trade with it and start to really see how this can be used in their trading. And we find a lot of people end up uh, coming along and, and signing up for our membership and uh, you know and getting the, the core bundle at a discounted price. So it, it works together. And again, if you're trading any kind of meaningful money, I believe the value you're going to really be excited about what value charts can do for your trading. Uh, has anybody tested the value charts tools in live trading environment? Yes, we have. We have done it with a hedge fund. In fact, uh, it was a really interesting test. Now, this is one one test, mind you. Okay, and in no way I'm not, I'm going to say this right away. There's no tool on the planet that's going to guarantee that you're going to be profitable in every trade. All right, so. Let me just tell you about one test here again. There's a risk of loss when trading markets. You all know that. And past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. We did do one test. We had a hedge fund that was struggling with a short-term or several short-term S&P 500 models. And so what we did is we took their models that were losing badly. Their average loss coming into the test was around $65,000 being lost per month. And what we did is we took the value charts indicator and we overlaid it on top of their existing model. So instead of buying overvalued like their model, model typically did, we waited for the, the prices to correct down into undervalued. All right, live trading. And this was that started, we did this test in December of 2010 through like uh, next, for the next seven months or so. So what's interesting here is that just the overlay of value charts made a dramatic difference for the following seven months. All right, it made a huge difference. So they were average losing money around 65,000. We turned it into an average of gain of 25,000 just by average or inserting the value charts tools and overlay. So instead of buying overvalued, we can quantify and buy undervalued. Instead of selling undervalued, we wait for a bounce back to sell overvalued. All right, so that's one test in no way, shape, or form by saying that you're guaranteed to make money with value charts. Okay, I don't do that, but I, I will tell you that I believe that you can make a lot of money with value charts. All right, so if you develop your skill, you spend the time and really learn how we combine value charts with other indicators and other tools, it can be extremely powerful. All right, uh, why are you telling us this? Let's see, it works well. Okay. Yeah, so we're required by law, by the way, if you want to know for some of these disclaimers. And I think it's a good thing. You know, past performance are not necessarily indicative of future results. A lot of people out there will hype up performance results. I could do the same thing on our website, but you'll notice that we don't because we're not interested in misleading anybody out there. Trading is challenging. Trading is, I mean, regardless, trading is challenging. We've got great tools, and we're so confident in our tools that we have two live trading rooms that are trading every day in the market. So if you want to see how we trade our stuff in real time, Come and see, and you'll see. Uh, we, you know, our guys are trading and uh, showing you great signals in real time. Okay, if the other MQ indicators are in the in conflict with the snapback, do you take it, for instance, to regression? James, that's a great question, and that is a something we're going to go over in the class as well. But you, you, uh, you know, you touch on a very good point here, and that is you may not want to do that. So you can actually get a a triple tail snapback setup in something that is confirming, maybe other technical analysis that confirms it, or you can get a situation where it actually it actually does not confirm it, like momentum, exactly right. If it does not confirm it, you may opt not to take the signal. So what I like to do is take these triple, these triple tails and combine those with momentum, combine those with value candlestick patterns and things like that. So these and support and resistance. And so these can be extremely powerful when you do that. And that only serves, in my opinion, to increase the probability of success. Okay, have you done any significant long-term testing 
using the day trading two or three swing equities. Uh, we have. We've done a lot of testing in the past with a lot of different models. And, uh, but yeah, we, we love the technology. Again, you have to optimize your strategies. And, um, obviously, we, the, you want the in-sample period to be fairly simple, the out-of-sample period in the markets. But there's tremendous potential there. Okay, the trading room, Wood and Dave, the Thomas Wood does and Dave does are great, but the black screen with the small uh, numbers area is sometimes hard to see, but the ch uh, chat rooms are great. Paul, thanks. Yeah, they're great trading rooms. Uh, Thomas Wood and David Aquino are great guys. They're great traders, so great educators. And, you know, again, if we weren't confident in our, our technology, we wouldn't be showing you trades in real time. Uh, this presentation is focused on puts. And do you use the same logic for calls? Yes, David, exactly the same thing for calls. Uh, for example, let's look at a, a – um, this could have been – let me let me go back in time. Let's find a, a, a an Apple example for a call. Okay. Uh, see here. Uh, if I can go back in time far enough. Um, let's see here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, uh, get more data. Let's go 5,000 bars back. All right. Okay, so down here we got. Okay, a second here. It uh, trade station is not behaving when it when they do the pending data right here. It takes a second to update all the indicators. All right, so uh, you can see right down here we had two of the three uh, register. We had two significantly undervalued in two time frames. Again, I, I think James pointed out earlier that uh, that if you have a, a another indicator like a momentum or a trending indicator that yet confirms this again, this could be, you want to, you know, take action with two. So you could do that. You have a three flag up here. You might, you know, you might have bought the puts up here, bought the calls down here at the bottom. Um, you have two down here, and that's snapped back a little bit. This, even with this one bar down here, snapped back a little bit. Not enough there. I think that probably would have been a loser right there, but lots of winning trading opportunities here. You have the tops right there, a value migration up into here, so that would have been losing. Nice snap back here, though, right off the open. Uh, see if I can find a good buying opportunity or one that's called out. Uh, this wasn't the exact, okay, nice put option here at the top. Nice, uh, I'd say this is, you know, 2 2 2, and then you have the open of the day right here. If you held on to this long enough through the close, you would have benefited right there. So it just depends. That's, uh, you know what, this is the, this is a situation that's a good thing to look at. This is expiration day on the 9th of May, and you have the triple effect right here. So, if you would have bought your options right here, you, yeah, it, it popped up in your direction and then started gravitating back down towards your entry price. If you see that happen, here's my suggestion: dump it. I mean, just get, take your take your uh, break even, you know, break even profits, if you will, if you have a chance to do that, and then live the trade another day because you don't have the luxury of staying around and, and hoping this to go up. Now, this actually did work out. This actually did rally by the end of the day and worked out to be a nice deal, but. We don't know if that would have been profitable if we would have held on to close. I wouldn't wait around that long on the expiration Friday. Uh, we include momentum in the Tuesday class. Yes, I will absolutely include momentum. Uh, does live, okay, monthly live trading room membership include both futures and options? Yes, it does. It's awesome. So it has both. Uh, if you, we purchase a class but can't make it in conflict of schedule, the recording is available to you. So if you can't make the class, you can actually access the recording anytime you want. Uh, well, Dave can't help being a good teacher. Yeah, his whole family is involved in teaching. Uh, you know what? I, uh, yeah, Dave's a great teacher. He's a great guy. He's just a really nice guy. So what I like about Thomas Wood and David Kino, those are our two live trading room managers. These guys are professional traders, first of all. And second of all, they actually genuinely care about people. So they meet people sometimes that, uh, you know, when they go to uh, industry events. Uh, Thomas Wood actually was going to meet somebody on Christmas Eve. Believe it or not, a trader wanted to meet up, and he was going to meet her on Christmas Eve just to say hello and see how he can help trading. So, you know, they're, they're good folks. They, they are very helpful, and they know how to trade, too. Okay, do indicators work on Ninja Trader? Yes, they do. Okay, if we purchase the class, yep, I think I answered that. We include momentum, yep. Uh, does monthly live trading or membership include, yep. Uh, let's see, this presents presentation is focused on, got that one as well. Okay. Um, okay, so I think I've answered most questions here, and I know that we all have lives outside of trading, especially on a Saturday afternoon. I'm going to go ahead and check out here. Let me answer another question or two. Okay, now that he is married, he's not able to have Christmas Eve meetings. James, you got that right. So, I, yeah, he's going to get in trouble with that if he tries to do that now. 
My MQ value chart only appears as three color bands across the screen. Henry, is that MQ value charts, is that on Ninja? Uh, that could be a different platform or, or even uh, TOS. There's different, each platform has different representations. I actually, believe it or not, some people like the, the bars, some people like the, uh, the bands. I prefer the bands personally. So I like them both. They're, they're both the same thing, just giving the same information in a slightly different way. But, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see, Henry. Okay, so Trade Station. Yeah, Trade Station should be should be exactly what I see here. If you have an issue with that, uh, Henry, reach out to our customer service on on Monday. We'll get you taken care of. Okay, the five six trade looks like the only winner. Let's see here. Uh, five six. Yes, uh, this one right here probably wasn't a loser. I think in this particular case, I don't know. Hard to say here. Might have been a, a slight loser there. Uh, down here, yeah, it's flattish. Yeah, I think that's probably a fair statement. So that, but that could have been a really nice one there, depending on how long you held that. I, I think that's a fair statement. I don't think I think there's a lot of them, but a lot of them these could have been pretty close to break even. Though. That's the nice thing about it. When you went to three three dots right here, it, it flatlined for a period. Three dots up here, it kind of flatlined a period. So when you see that happen, it doesn't do what you want it to do very quickly. Then you want to get out of dodge. All right. So and that, again, I challenge you to go back in time and look. This is the gap up, by the way, that you're looking at. Be careful when that happens. I think that's right uh, with the earnings. So, but yeah, just go back in time. And this, by the way, uh, there's a lot of other ways to do this. I'm just showing you some ways to do it with three indicators applied to the same time frame. All right, there's even more powerful ways of doing this, of approaching the strategy with multiple time frames. So, when you look at this, don't just judge this because I'm going to show you some more powerful ways of doing this. And in addition, you know, somebody rightly said, "Hey, there's not," you know, I saw one good trade there. We're going to actually reinforce these signals with other technical analysis. So when you add all that up, I think there's a good chance we're going to find some really nice signals that have higher probabilities for success. Um, P PCLN, Priceline. PCLN, no problem throwing that up there. Let's take a look at And by the way, this is just 15-minute bars. Now, let's take a look at Priceline here. This is two really nice situations. So right at the open here, let this uh, update. So nice triple dot here at the top, right? We have a nice snap back here on the open of, of June 3rd and a nice snap back here. It's a little snap back, mind you. So you're going from a low of the underlying of uh, 1256 to a high of 1273. So that's a pretty nice move there. It doesn't look like a lot here, but those are, those are nice moves. Here, I'm going to actually expand my chart. So that snap back's not bad. That's tradable right there. Next snapback. This snapback is easily tradable. So both of those should have been profitable. And then, again, I caution you at, at playing the gaps here. But if you did, then that, that actually proved out to be a nice profitable trade as well. Um, okay, next one. Thanks for your time and sharing your knowledge with us at such a great discount of price. Al, my pleasure. Would you mind showing a PC? I got that up there. Do you still trade? Uh, I have traded a lot this year. What markets do you trade and why? I, I've been trading mostly futures markets. Michael, I'm actually in the process of doing a lot of software work right now, so I'm sidelined on purpose because I'm. I, it's hard for me to walk away from the markets when I'm actually trading, so I'm just taking a, a, a brief hiatus. I've done a lot of trading on the year. Um, but, um, yeah, so for me, I'm, I'm, uh, I have a hard time drawing a balance with trading. So if I know I'm, I'm, I'm live active in the markets, it's pulling me away from my software development. I need to get our platform out there. So I need to, uh, to start really taking this seriously. Uh, Priceline uh, could have wide bid and ask. Yeah, now Rodney brings up an excellent point. And that is be sure on the, on the options, if you have a wide bid ask and Priceline options, then work your trade. You know, work it in the middle. You may, you may end up missing out on a signal by doing that, but, but you don't want to have a ton of slippage with this stuff. Um, okay. Let's see here. Uh, do you, okay. Thank you so much for the great webinar. This is helpful. Uh, you are a very helpful person, too. Appreciate that, T. Okay, do you have any idea on when and how much your platform will be? Al, I'm hoping to have that out. And this is, I don't mean to be evasive with this. I hate to give out any more bad dates because we've just been running behind. But uh, I'm hoping in the next couple of months to have this thing out once and for all. But but we have a, there's an issue with the, uh, every time they change a browser out there, they update uh, Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer, then it, it can mess us up. So we've got to, and they don't announce that a lot of times. So we've got to make sure that our browser-based platform has is, is totally functioning with all the new updates. 
uh, will be integrated in any trading platforms. It, we have tools that are right now, but the new platform is actually independent. Uh, how will you avoid slippage? Work at it. Um, okay, using just calls or back ratio. Yeah, just working the trade. Daryl, just working the trade. Who will present the workshop? James, that's me. I'm presenting workshop. Uh, Al, cost of the platform. Or, yeah, I'm not sure yet, but it's not it's not going to be much to try it, okay, in terms of, of get on there. If you bought the, the tools already, you're gonna get, we're going to give you all the tools in the platform. You don't have to repurchase them. I mean, will software work on interactive brokers? Yes, we are hoping to connect to IB. Yep, so we are hoping to be able to do that. But even if it doesn't, it will. it's, it's broker neutral. So you can use it and you can trade through any broker of your choice. All right, folks, well, this is, we've gone over a bit, uh, and I'm going to get in trouble with my family if I don't uh, head out and have some family time today. But uh, thanks to everybody for taking your time to come today. And, again, for all of you who can join me on Tuesday, I think it's Tuesday. In fact, let me throw this down. Yeah, Tuesday, uh, June 10th at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, go to valuecharts.com forward slash snap, $47. I mean, literally, it's less than a tank of gas in my car. So if you're, if you're serious about trading, I think you're going to walk away with some nice tools and, and uh, knowledge from that. Uh, okay, would you look at NQ, if you do it, Apple, NQ session only. Let's see if I can throw it up there. Okay, and then I've got to stop taking questions here. Otherwise, I am going to, we'll be here all day and I'll get in trouble with my family. So let me throw this up here. Um, you don't want 24-hour session only, day session only, I guess is what you're asking for. So I'm not sure what the, what the request was. So again, uh, with different markets too, uh, I, I recommend using, again, enhancing this with some strategies. I'll show you how to do that at the workshop, but this should give you an idea. And also, we, we're just looking at 15 minute. I would certainly recommend checking out you know, 30 minute. You can apply this to 30 minute as well. And even intra bar, when it pops up over value in a 30 minute, it could be something worth looking at. Uh, 60 minute could be something worth looking at as well. It's a little more conservative. 60 Minute did a beautiful job of catching this low right here. You can see we don't have many occurrences, though, in 60 Minute. We have one here. Uh, that's uh, right there on the, the 2nd of June. And then we have the only other one here on the 5th of June. And that had a nice snapback. That's plenty of a snapback right there between the high of uh, 37.57 and the falling low two hours later of 37.34. I mean, that's plenty of snapback there to make some nice profits. Uh, recording link will be sent to you, James. So if you for registering today, it will be sent. Uh, Lynn, thank you. Have a good day yourself. Uh, Howard, thank you as well. And uh, and Al, and everybody else. Uh, Gord, okay, yeah, I put that up there for you. And then I think that should do it. So if you're looking for the recording, that will the link will be sent out to you. And I think it's going to be available on our, our uh, just posted up there on our YouTube channel, anyways. But from from uh, today's workshop. All right. I'm checking out. Have a great weekend and look forward to seeing you folks at the Tuesday workshop. Henry, thank you. Paul, thanks.